In this video, I'm going to show you how to restore highlight detail from your slightly overexposed videos inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So we're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and we have some footage imported on our timeline. And as you can see, this is just some generic B-roll of a landmark in London. Now, the main composition, the main actual focus of this footage is actually exposed correctly. But the problem is you can see the sky is starting to overexpose a little. Now, if I was to just go into effects and add a random levels onto this footage, you can see if I pull down the RGB gamma, all of that detail in the sky is there. But the problem is pulling the gamma down that far means that the rest of the video is now going to be underexposed. So in order to get the sky exposed correctly and have the rest of the video correctly exposed as well, we're going to have to do some masking. So let's just delete levels for now. And I'm just going to unlink the video to the audio. So I'm just going to right click, select unlink, and I'm going to make a copy of this footage. So we'll hold down option, drag the footage up, and we've made a copy. Of course, though, you can just go Command C, Command V to copy and paste or Control C, Control V if you're on Windows. So in order to do that, you just go Command C, move over Command V and drag that on top. But once you've got that footage added on, we can now just go ahead and put our levels on our second video clip and we'll pull the gamma down just a little bit like this. So around 50. So we're starting to get those highlights coming back. Now from here, we're just going to zoom out to 50 or 75%. We're just going to zoom out a little and we're just going to go into opacity, into the free draw bezier. And at the very beginning, we're just going to draw a mask around the top part of our frame and try not to go over any parts of the frame. Try and avoid that if possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to do some feathering later on. So as you can see, if I zoom back in and I turn that mask off, you can see already that started to look a little better. But the problem is we are slightly seeing these edges. That is quite obvious. And I did go over this part of the frame as well. So I'm just going to go back in and I'm just going to make a few adjustments to this mask to just fix a few key areas. So I'm just going to bring this in here. I'm going to bring this in a bit closer here as well. And there you go. I think that's a good starting point to work from. So I'm just going to create a brand new keyframe on the mask path. Then I'm going to move over to one second and I'm just going to make sure that this mask is still sitting where it needs to be. And then I'll move over any areas of this mask that are slightly overlapping areas of the frame. Then we'll go to the two second mark and we'll do the same thing again. So just move that mask over to where you feel like it needs to go. That's about right. We'll move over to three seconds. As you can see, we're now having to move this over quite a bit. And we're having to pull this mask so that it doesn't actually affect the lamppost. Then we'll go to four seconds. Same thing again. We'll move that entire mask back over. Make an adjustment over here on the left of the frame like this. And then make this adjustment over here so that it doesn't overlap with this lamppost in the foreground. Then we'll go to the very end. And same thing again. We'll just move this mask over, just making sure that it's in the right position. And as you can see, we should have all of these keyframes created. So now you just want to scrub through and make sure that it's doing what it needs to do. So make sure it's roughly following the movement. And if it drifts out for any reason, if something happens like this, then just go ahead and move this back to where it needs to go. As you can see, I actually overlap the building here. So I'm just going to move that across. And now that's looking roughly where I need this to go. So from here, we're just going to increase the mask feather all the way up to around four, five hundred percent, really try and blend this in. And now when we play this back, you can see instantly if we turn the video layer off and then turn it back on, you can see that sky detail is really starting to come through. You can really see that as well if I pull down the gamma even further. So let's pull it down to here. But when I take it too far, one, this looks completely unbelievable. And two, you're really starting to see the softness around the mask up here. So it's important to find the number that's starting to bring back that highlight detail. So this is where we started. And if we bring this down to around 30 or 40, we're getting that detail back, but it's not starting to look unrealistic. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could also actually focus on color correcting or color grading the sky as well. So if we add Lemetri onto this, so Lemetri color, drag that onto your footage, go into basic correction, you can go into temperature and tint and you can actually warm this up or cool this down to match the scene. 
because we pulled this down it's actually bringing out a warmth in the sky and that doesn't look like it's properly matching the rest of the footage so if we pull the temperature over to the left cool it down a little bit this now matches the frame better than it did before so this was before and this is after it's very subtle but it really just helps to blend in the sky to the rest of the frame so let me show you the before and now this is the after now, if you wanted to, you could go into that mask feather and you can increase this a lot higher. So we're up to 1000 at the moment and you really struggling to see the edges of that frame. But you just have to be careful that it doesn't start bleeding into the rest of the frame. Of course, as well, you could always increase or decrease the mask expansion as well. So decreasing it, it means it's going to eat less into the buildings. But if I increase this, then it's going to start overlapping the buildings and you can see the top of the buildings are starting to get dark now. But there you go, this was the before and this is the after. It's not a dramatic change in difference, there's only a very subtle difference there. But just adding that little bit of highlight detail back into the frame is making this video pop a lot more than it was before. But there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.